seven, Ole Miss and Tulane, former conference foes in the SEC. Ole Miss heads down to Yulman Stadium. It's 3.30 p.m. Eastern time this Saturday. It's on ESPN2. Uh, this is a ranked matchup. This is the first time that Tulane has hosted an SEC team in New Orleans since they hosted these same Ole Miss Rebels back in 2012. And I, I would assume they're hoping not to turn back the clock uh, to 2012. Ole Miss won that one 39 to nothing. And so Ole Miss uh, currently a seven and a half point road favorite at BetUS. Uh, the total moving on up. Total sits at 65 right now. Now, not only is Tulane seven and two against the spread in their last nine at home, but you go back even further, they're 21 and nine against the spread in their last 30 inside Yulman. Uh, Ole Miss, on the other hand, they're four, two and one against the spread as a road favorite. They are seven, four and one against the spread against non-conference competition under Lane Kiffin. Now, Kyle, Tulane handled South Alabama last week, 37 to 17. They were the benefactors of five turnovers, but they also lost three fumbles themselves and still won by three touchdowns. Uh, defense looked good. The offense relied more on Michael Pratt, you know, going 14 out of 15 for 294 yards passing and four TDs. You know, last year it was all Tajay Sharp. Uh, this year, or Tajay Spear, excuse me. Uh, Ole Miss, on the other side, they hung 73 on Mercer last week. The quarterback, Jackson Dart, looked awesome. I know people are going to say it's just an FCS team. Mercer is a top 20 FCS team, and Ole Miss outgained them by 432 yards. Now, Kyle, this looks like an awesome early season test for both teams. Tell me what you're seeing here. Yeah, it's interesting to see the the line move as much as it has. You know, certainly liked Ole Miss better at the the opening line than what I do now. I, w- I would want to bet that side. Uh, seven and a half is a tough take. Tulane's been a team that I've been a bit lower on than the market coming into the season. It didn't look good last week. You know, South Alabama, I thought they'd play better than that. Uh, five turnovers certainly played a role, but the Green Wave defense played pretty well in that game. Now, Tulane gets a massive test for their defense because uh, setting aside that they scored 73 points on Mercer, like you said, Mercer is a pretty good FCS team. And we know that even if you didn't look at that game, Ole Miss is really good offensively. They have a lot of really good weapons. Uh, it's going to be uh, much different than what Tulane is used to seeing. Uh, you know, Spencer Sanders transferred over, thought that he might be able to get the job. Now he's a, a good backup quarterback. I mean, they have two good options there for sure. Uh, Kiffin has solid wide receivers, uses them well every year. Judkins is fantastic, one of the best running backs in the country. I think Ole Miss moves the ball very well in this game. So then the question, you shift over, can Tulane do the same thing? Ole Miss defense under Golding is going to be interesting to watch throughout the course of the season, certainly. Uh, Tulane's offense is good. Michael Pratt's efficiency, like you said, 14 for 15 passing, 294 yards, four touchdowns. And against the South Bama defense that is good. You know, Kane Womack's a good defensive Mind, they have a good defense there. Tulane's offensive line is a big strength. I think they've been underrated quite a bit. So the question is, uh, going into this game, what do you take from a side? What do you take from a total? For me, from a total, I would have to take over if I bet anything. Uh, you know, I think Ole Miss is going to see big plays. They're going to give up some big plays. Uh, 24-7 team talent composite. Ole Miss is 23rd. Tulane is 81st. That's a pretty big gap. Uh, I do really respect Willie Fritz a lot. So let's get why I'm going to stay off of this. I, I will give an angle here that I think is interesting. This would have applied to, to my Texas State and UTSA game. Uh, on the over, non-conference totals of 70 points or lower with a temperature of 85 degrees or higher. So we're looking at really hot games. 241 and 181 to the over. 57.1% overs since 2005. So Hot games, weather games are good for the over. The defense gets tired. I'm going to lean to the over here in this one. I I could roll with that. I could roll with that. But Parker, we'll move over to you. I feel like I've shouted my love for Willie Fritz on this show enough, but even with multiple roster and coaching changes after a 12 and two AAC and Cotton Bowl championship season, they still came out and dominated the Sun Belt favorite in Week One. Uh, the issue that I have is I still cannot get out of my head what Lane Kiffin does to teams when he has a, a talent advantage and a matchup advantage. And there's a possibility he's got one against Tulane's run defense. They were number 91 in PPA per rush after week one. Uh, the stats, you look at the stats, it tells a little bit of a different story. But uh, Parker, walk, walk me through this one. What do you see here? Yeah, one, can't say enough about Willie Fritz and Tulane. I mean, their defensive coordinator got hired away. They went and hired the best 
the next best G5 defensive coordinator. He got hired away. They went and hired the next best one. And Willie Fritz tried to go to Georgia and Tulane outbid them. That is some very impressive pockets for Tulane to make all of that happening this, this offseason here. Um, I am a little bit worried about Ole Miss's pass defense. We saw last season, Tulsa game, for instance, when it's bad, it's bad. When somebody just wants to chuck the ball, they really can go after this Ole Miss passing defense. Michael Pratt was four for four on balls, 20 plus yards downfield. He averaged 43 yards per attempt. Attempt, not per reception, per attempt on those 20 plus yards downfield, just chucking it up there. Um, and that was really the difference. I would expect some regression from that. I don't think that he'll be able to sustain that entirely, especially with Ole Miss certainly having a better defensive line than uh, than South Alabama. What I'm watching for specifically about Tulane's defense and why I'm staying away, because I would slightly lean Tulane. But what I'm worried about is one, Krishan Juggins just impossible to stop just so hard and they run PA they run RPO it's just it's so hard to stop especially with the talent disadvantage like you mentioned also Ole Miss had four guys with a 12 percent or higher target share spreading the ball around distributing and still Trey Harris had 6.3 yards per route run super productive there so the, the 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 kind of spread I think makes this really really hard and then you add Judkins underneath I, I think this two-lane defense that I expect to regress just a little bit uh it, it is going to be in a really bad spot here so as much as I love Pratt, I think um, they're in a really, really rough situation with kind of the dual threat nature of Ole Miss, especially not having the athletes at cornerback to really take away some of these top options. If Ole Miss can spread the ball around and then force you to pick that or Judkins, it could get it could get bad here. So uh, staying staying away from me, even though the numbers slightly said Tulane, because I think I've talked myself out of this matchup uh, between those the 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 Ole Miss uh, offense and the Tulane defense. My number on this game after week one has got Ole Miss favored by 11. I think Kiffin's team, they're going to be able to run the ball against a smaller two lane defensive line. I I don't think Pratt's going to hit 95% of his passes, you know, like you were talking (laughs) about Parker. Uh, Pete Golding, I think is going to give some different looks that maybe uh, Tulane is not used to with this. This defense looked pretty good last week. Um, Ole Miss is used to hostile environments in the sec. They've got a big talent advantage. If this thing gets back to seven, I'm going to lay the points with the Rebels. I bet this at six, uh, but for now, you know, no official pick here. Uh, if this thing continues to move up, maybe I bet Tulane on the other side. Maybe I can get a nice middle here, but no official pick on the show for this one. 